So, Ginger. Yeah? You know how we wanted to start a podcast, but we were having trouble coming up with a topic? Yeah. Okay, so here's my pitch. The topic of the podcast is us trying to come up with the topic for the podcast. What? Like we pitch each other podcast ideas and that's the podcast? Yeah, exactly. We could call it, What Should Our Podcast Be About? Miles, that's really stupid. Let's do it. What should this song be about? I'm trying to figure it out. What should this song be about? Could you perhaps help me out? I've had a moment of doubt. What should this song be about? Welcome to What Should Our Podcast Be About, the podcast where we try to figure out what this podcast that you're listening to right now should be about. I'm Miles Grover. And I'm Ginger Barham. And we have figured out all the hats for animals, all the tiny hats. Have we? All of them? All the animals? Yep, we're done. Echidnas? Yep, they all wear party hats. Okay. Party hats is the best hat for every animal, That's it turns out. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> yeah. And we invited all the animals to our birthday party for Rory next weekend. Right. Um, so we got a lot of prep work to do. Right. Yep. Someone's going to have to be on poop duty. Not Because of all the animals pooping. N- not it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. By someone, I met you. Oh, you were doing the like... Someone's got a dirty diaper kind of, kind of someone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Someone's got to clean up the poop. I was voluntelling you as I they see. As you they say. told me. You okay. Voluntold. All right. Well, I have reconsidered whether I want all the animals to come to the party. <laughs> you were on board <laughs> until the poop. I'll just mail them the hats and they can wear them at home. <laughs> and send you pictures. Yes. Yeah. At, at their animal homes that I have the mailing address for. <laughs> For all animals. Yeah, I don't know how you, where on the dark web you went to find the <laughs> mailing addresses for all the animals For in all the, the animals, yeah. They, it turns out they're like pretty lax about password security and stuff, mm-hmm. so they're, it's pretty easy to get their details. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you know the right shady internet guy. The right corners of the internet to yeah. go to. Mm-hmm. Which I definitely do. Mm-hmm. I, I, I also definitely know what the dark web is and how to get to it and stuff. <laughs> You just go to darkgoogle.com, right? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Or if you want to know teen stuff, you go to teengoogle.com. <laughs> That's, I think, I'm pretty sure Justin McElroy owns that. that teengoogle.com? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> he might have a worse um, a worse addiction than I do to buying stupid domain names. But. Yeah, yeah. You guys should compare sometime. Justin McElroy, get at us. Yeah. Come on our podcast. We know that you listen to this <laughs> podcast. You're one of our like 10 listeners. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have ideas for podcasts? Should we talk about podcast ideas, which is what this podcast is Is that about. what we're doing this week? That's what we're doing this week. That's my idea for this week. Okay. Because we talk about podcast ideas. Okay. All right. Let's, let's give it a shot. Okay. Do you have any ideas or do you want me to start? Um, I've got some ideas. Okay. My first idea this week is a... Miss Rachel talk back show. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I'm just lobbing that to you. You go. <laughs> okay. So how often do Miss Ra- new Miss Rachel things come out? Or would we do a talk back for the same episode that we watch every day with Rory? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how often they come out. Because a lot of times I'll just put on the live one, which is just clips from... Yeah, the live one is kind of funny because it's absolutely not at all live. It's just them playing completely it's random clips. It's streaming live, right? Right, it's, I guess. Yeah. But it's just random clips from other episodes or But whatever. it's excellent because you don't have to like... You don't have to to push the button again every hour to get yeah. a, new, a new one. To not that he's one. watching it for like four hours, but like yeah. a lot of times it'll be like halfway through. Right. Or, you know, there's like 10 minutes left and I just didn't take it back to the beginning because he doesn't care. No. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think the funny thing about the live, the funniest part about the live, you know, quote unquote live one is that they still play the the ones where it's like, and that's it. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. And then immediately another thing comes right, on. Right. Yeah. After. Yeah. I've noticed that. It's Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, so. Yeah. So this is our, this is our talk back show for Miss Rachel. For Miss Rachel. Pretty, um. um Pretty big audience for a show like this, I think, probably. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, okay, so we what would we talk about on what do they talk about on talkback shows? We talked about so many talkback shows. I still don't listen to any really. So yeah, well, I mean, we listened to the Fireside. That's true. They, so they just talk about what happened in the episode. They talk about like some of the behind the scenes stuff or whatever. Of course, they're the ones on that show, right? We, so we're talking about the Fireside for, for the podcast for the podcast. Worlds Beyond, Worlds Beyond Number. Number. Fred and Lee Mulligan, Erica Ishii, Bria Bri- Iyengar, and Lou Wilson. And Lou Wilson. The, the Wizard, the Witch, and the Wild one. Um, well, I guess we listen to the Fireside for... Because they have other other campaigns they run too, but... Yeah. I mean, I've listened to talkbacks for different sh- TV shows, so... So we would recount the plot of this Recount week. the plot a little bit, like... So in this one, it turns out that old McDonald, he has a lot of animals on his farm. Yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of animals. And, and I felt like that wasn't really plausible. Yeah. And I don't know why he's so, like, obsessed with just listing out vowels yeah I, yeah and then that went right into bingo right who couldn't remember his name and so she had to like sing a song right so that bingo could remember how to spell his name right he could he could remember his name he couldn't remember how to spell his name right which like i don't think most dogs know how to spell that's true so it, i mean it's plausible that he wouldn't know how to spell his name <laughs> But it's uh, not but very plausible. I don't plausible. think he knew, knows English either. It probably wouldn't help him very much to tell him how to spell his yeah. name. Although I did have the thought recently, there was a farmer, had a dog, and Bingo was his name-o, right? Yeah. That could mean the farmer's name is Bingo or the dog's name is right. Bingo. Or maybe both their names are Bingo right. for some reason. Yeah. My name's Bingo and I named my dog Bingo as well. <laughs> I named my dog Bingo after me, after Bingo. Me, Bingo. The farmer. My parents named me after their dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's an endless cycle. It's come from a long line of bingos. Yep. We named the dog Indiana. <laughs> Do you know George Lucas actually had a dog named Indiana? No. And I guess that's why that's, that's, they literally did name Indiana Jones after the dog. Huh. Well. Hmm. Yeah. No. Just hmm. a random fact I read recently. Anyway. That's one of those facts where you're like, huh. You're like, huh, that makes sense, I guess. And then and it's like, it's mildly interesting. I read that actually on Wikipedia. Oh. Because I was reading about How Wookies. to spell Wookie. Because yeah, the because I know how to spell I, Wookie. And the I was, shirt that I ordered, Rory, was spelled incorrectly. Has Wookie spelled wrong. Because there's yeah. two E's at the end. Yeah. Uh, still a cute onesie. It's still a cute onesie. Hopefully most people won't shame my baby in public. Probably not. I mean, babies don't know how to spell, let alone difficult words like Wookie. Yeah. Apparently, my baby made the shirt. So <laughs> yes, your baby made the our your baby did. My baby didn't, but your did. Yours did. Um, no, I was saying it like I was talking. Yeah, to no, I know. I, but then I said your baby made the shirt. Like it's oh, not the same like baby. Like you had nothing to do with yeah, this like, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was I was reading that apparently Wookies are also based on the same dog, Indiana. George what? Lucas's dog, like their appearance, not the oh. word Wookie, but their appearance. Because yeah, so he just like really loved his He was dog. just into that dog, I guess. He really was into that dog. Did that dog go, ah, ah. I can't Probably. do a Wookie noise. Can you do a Wookie? Yeah. Uh, our son uh, can do, our uh, son can do very good Wookie noises, which is why we have the t-shirt. I, that sound I just made sounded more like those videos where somebody's cabinet squeaks yeah. and sounds like a Wookie. <laughs> It's hard to do a Wookiee noise. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I assume the dog just barked like regular dogs, but... Gotta be good at like gargling on command. Although I guess Wookiee is just like woofy, but with a K. Yeah. So that's... I wouldn't be surprised. There's a lot of dog inspiration there. And also he's kind of like Han Solo's dog. Yeah. (laughs) I guess. Yeah. In a way. Uh, Anyway... What were we talking about? Miss Rachel Talkback Miss Rachel show. Talkback Show. So yeah. this is the kind of thing you could expect if we did a Miss Rachel <laughs> Talkback Show. Just talking uh, about... I mean, it's kind of... It's, it's got some legs. Yeah. It's also what you expect listening to this podcast that we're doing anyway. So right. I guess that's just the podcast that you you got. Yeah. Okay. Miss Rachel Talkback Show. That's interesting, especially because she doesn't put out new episodes all that often. I feel like maybe once a month or something. And mostly we only watch... The same two videos over and over again. Right. Yeah. Because repetition is. Because it's probably. A thing it might be kids. better for the baby yeah. to only see a few or whatever. And yeah. also he doesn't need to be seeing like. He's not like hungry for new content. He's not hungry for new content. But a lot of her con like the ones we watch are the ones that are specifically for little babies. Yeah. And not, you know, she the has ones, ones for older kids yeah. too or whatever. 
Yeah. Uh, the other thing I was thinking, uh, so I had another related idea, which was a Bluey talkback show, which that one would probably be actually a little bit more engaging. That would be more like a real talkback show. That would be more yeah. like a real talkback show. That that could even already exist. I mean, it probably does. Yeah. And that could be kind of fun. Yeah. And I haven't watched all of the episodes of Bluey, so. Uh, yeah, and I've I only actually, watched a handful. So. I actually enjoy watching Bluey, so. Yeah. That one would be slightly. That would be that would be more like a real idea. Yeah. And less of a funny, yeah. silly idea like yeah. a Miss Rachel talkback show. Yeah. I don't know if we, we traffic in that sort of thing here. Yeah. Doesn't sound like us. <laughs> okay. What do you got this week? Let's see. Uh, my first idea is called Don't Talk to Me Until I've Had My Amphetamines. This is and an it, ADD it, podcast? It's an ADHD podcast. And that's kind of all I've got. But I figure we've got plenty of stuff we could talk about as far as living with ADHD since we mm -hmm. both do. Like, for example, getting ready for this recording, I had to go get a chair because we're trying to record in a different room than we usually do. And when I got to the chair, it had a bunch of cat hair on it. So I went and got the vacuum and vacuumed off the cat hair. And by the time I was done with that, I went back upstairs and didn't bring the chair. Mm -hmm. And I remembered, oh, yeah, the reason I went downstairs was to get the chair. Yeah. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that happens all the time. Yeah. I definitely feel like my ADD has leveled up since having a baby. One, because I'm not taking medication. Because you're not taking your medication anymore. Because uh, I'm, well, first I was pregnant, then uh, now now I've breastfeeding. been bre breastfeeding. So. so we don't necessarily want to be giving Rory amphetamines. Right. In his, uh, <laughs> So on, and then on top of that, it's a whole new set of things that you've got to keep in your mind when you have a baby. Just not going into that too much, but just all the things you have to con you're constantly thinking about nap times and yeah, yeah. feeding schedules and what am I going to make you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And plus, on top of that, sleep deprivation exacerbates, mm -hmm. at least for me. Yeah, a lot of the symptoms. Yeah, makes them a lot worse. I saw a reel on Instagram at one point that was, you know, what it's like being uh, a parent, being a mom and, um, or just like or pri primary caregiver, the primary person in charge of like household stuff. And it was just, you know, she goes to wash the dishes and then realizes that the sink is full. So she can't do the dishes till she puts away the dishes. So she goes to put away the dishes and oh, I don't remember what it is after that, but then it's like, oh, before I put away the dishes, I want to do this thing. And like, before you know it, like you're in the bathroom thinking like, oh, I need to shower, but I don't want to shower because I'm going to dye my hair later. <laughs> and I don't want to shower till after I dye my hair. And it's just like the long chain of things. And I feel like that was really illustrative of, of ADD of like, before you know it, you're like, where did I start? Yeah. I started out just wanting to do a simple task and did like 15 other things. And then somehow now I'm in the living room trying to remember what it was I wanted to get done in the first place. Right. And that's if you that that's if you got the like motivation to go do the dishes to begin with, right? You right. still have to contend, which is hard enough as it is, right? With ADHD, I feel like making things a habit is is big for me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really have trouble doing the dishes anymore because it's just a part of the day. And if you, it turns out, if you keep up on something, it's not, not too that, bad. It's yeah. not that big a deal. Um, right now. <laughs> Right now, because the dishes hadn't been put away, we have a sink full of dishes. And now I have a mental block against like, it's this thing that I got to get done of all of these dishes. Right, right. So I think that could be a good podcast in terms of talking about like the things that are helpful. Mm -hmm. At least I would enjoy that. Talking yeah. about the things that, that are that, helpful. That help because, deal with, with it, yeah. Because certainly it it's a very different thing when all you have are just the tools that you use and you're, and you're not combining that with medication anymore mm -hmm. has been a, a pretty big challenge. Right. And I'm still medicated, but because I'm not breastfeeding. Yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> uh, currently. I mean, Rory tries sometimes. He does try. He's bitten my nipple before, but, um, <laughs> uh, let's not talk about nipple uh, biting. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. But, uh, but it's still, I mean, it only helps so much. Right. It's like it helps me to not lose my job. Yeah. Right. Because I do my job most days. Yeah. Unlike when I'm not medicated, it gets a lot harder to do my job. Right. Any days. Right. But uh, yeah, I think I think that could be fun. Yeah. I'm sure we would have plenty to talk about. 
this is also a less silly idea. Yeah, the main silly part is the title. Don't talk to me until I've had my amphetamines. Which you like to say sometimes. I do. Well, I only recently started saying that, but I have talked before lots of times about how I don't really need coffee in the morning because I take amphetamines. Anyway, For anybody who doesn't know, and we sound like maniacs right now, <laughs> dexamphetamine or dextroamphetamine, something like that, is the generic name of, of Adderall. And uh, it is related, but not the same as methamphetamine, for example. Yeah. I've had some people give me funny looks before when I say, oh, yeah, I just take amphetamines in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, Turns out not everybody knows about ADHD treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's pretty much that idea, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting because, I mean, I feel like coffee focuses me, too. So something about like ADHD and having a stimulant, it's like it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The... It makes your brain more normal. Yeah. Stimulants do. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I think that that idea is a good one. Which again is not usually what we traffic in yeah, here, but it might not be it might not be super funny or yeah or that interesting. But it, but I, I, I mean, I would enjoy talking about it. Yeah, so it could be fun. Yeah. For, yeah. Do you have more ideas? I have one more. Okay. Yeah, it's a bad ASMR podcast. Okay, we've had a few ideas like that. Yeah. In the past. I mean, I feel like we've we've definitely mentioned this in passing, but have we like explored? Like it's we, we try to come up with the worst possible. Like nobody oh. asked for that ASMR. Okay, so it's it's ASMR in the sense of making a sound, and the sound is the point. But it's actually horrible sounds. That yeah, nobody, like nobody's gonna get ASMR feelings from. Or yeah, whatever. like uh, I feel like for especially like we could talk about sounds that we really hate. Like I know we styrofoam both hate the styrofoam sounds. noise. Yeah, no, right? any noise like that styrofoam makes, scraping or breaking or yeah. I, I, it's in like a, a certain like frequency or something that just like turns my brain waves into little sharp spikes or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah. No, I mean, I, I feel like there are certain sounds like that are that are for that that are like that for me. I feel like I get auditory processing stuff sometimes, too, where mm -hmm. if there's like two noises happening at once. I just can't think can get and get really irritated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that could be one. <laughs> Our ASMR is we just turn on two radio stations at once <laughs> or like the radio station and TV. Uh -huh. so there's music playing and the TV's on. That's a big one for me. Mm. Or like music that's just far away enough that you can almost hear it, but not quite really bothers me. Mm -hmm. So this could, so this podcast could be like a diagnostic test for doctors trying to determine if someone has autism or ADHD maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but we could just talk about bad noises too. Could just be like, what are the worst noises kind yeah, of podcast. what are the worst noises. That which would be kind of fun. Which would be interesting. It would be difficult to find listeners who are willing to subject themselves to. Because, I mean, we wouldn't necessarily be doing, we would be talking about sounds, not just doing the sounds all the right. time, right? But you still, you can't talk about like, nails on the chalkboard or whatever without at least playing a little playing a little you bit. gotta put a clip in there yeah i feel think. like i feel like what are some other noises that you hate i don't know i, I feel like it's anything that's a certain like high-ish pitch but kind of crackly or staticky in a high-pitched way like i like mean the nails, recorder no recorder's not very crackly right i mean recorders high-pitched high terrible. terrible recorder is funny to me it, I don't, I don't like it per se, but it doesn't trigger that brain uh, malfunction or whatever. Yeah. Like nails on the chalkboard probably would sometimes at least. The styrofoam does, but I'm not sure what else. Mostly I don't have a whole lot of auditory processing issues or or, like or that kind of thing. Scraping against glass, I feel like. Mm, scraping sounds are, are scraping some of the sounds, worst in yeah. general, I would say. Yeah. Like dry high-pitched scraping sounds or something. What are some sounds that you like a lot? Hmm. Music. Well. Babies laughing. Yeah. <laughs> babies laughing. I was um, thinking a little less basic than that. Are there I, anything like specific? I don't know if I have any. I don't know. I guess I have to think. Do you have a, do you have a set, a, mm -hmm. you know, do you have sounds that you particularly. Sounds of, sound of like a rock falling into water is kind of satisfying. Okay. Like the ploop kind of sound the bloop noise yeah mm -hmm. yeah i suppose um i feel like some people maybe hate that sound too though yeah yeah it would be interesting to see because there's probably a lot of noises that i like that other people are like uh 
Yeah, maybe. Like, I feel like I heard somebody mention on something we were watching, maybe Taskmaster, the like sound of like cotton balls rubbing together. Mm. She hated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever heard that at a high enough volume that it would bother me, but I would imagine high volume. It wouldn't sound good. Yeah. Was that maybe that might have been Fern Brady talking about that? Yeah, maybe. I would, um, also, there was a commercial the other day. We don't watch commercials very often, but uh, it was it was when we were watching horror movies in October and some of the movies were streaming free with commercials. Oh, right. But there was one that was that they kept playing this cat food commercial oh, and the right. whole commercial was just dialed up sounds of a cat eating. And I was and I was like, no one asked for that. Yeah, Why? Yeah. How is this a good advertisement for your product? Is there somebody out there who likes that sound? <laughs> right. I think the idea of the ad was like. It was something like cats can't still be cool when they get our cat food because it's so good. They just go to town on it or something. Yeah, actually, I think it was maybe but, an advertisement. For, it was like little like treats like the like the tubes of of meat paste that they give at the vet. But it was like a lot, it was like temptations or something. Like yeah, that. I don't know. Something. Yeah, that didn't bother me as much as it bothered you, but it definitely wasn't pleasant sounding. Yeah, um, it really bothered me because it was like turned way up and it was like. Yeah. Like Just wet, chumpy sounds. Wet smacking noises. Yeah. Is there somebody who really likes wet smacking noises? Uh, maybe. I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, bad ASMR. Uh, or just talking about noises in general, noises we like, noises we don't like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess one flaw, potential flaw with this is that I don't think I have super strong feelings about sounds other than a a small range of sounds that really bother me. Hmm. Um, but other than that, like, I mean, I don't know what, are, what are good sounds like a baby laughing, a babbling brook or something. Like, I don't know if I have any like interesting, weird sounds that I particularly Wind like. Wind rushing, like out the sound of like a storm outside. Yeah. Yeah. I like the experience of like being cozy inside when a storm's happening outside, but I don't know if it's the sounds particularly. But I mean, that's a good white noise sound like yeah. if i put on so i had a white noise app and then and i made like a mix of it was like like a distant storm and then windshield wipers really lightly going in the background mm -hmm. um and then i think the other one was like wind going over cliffs and mm. that com that specific combination would just get me to sleep instantly mm. so really feel like reading a book then it's like instant Instant, I'm reading a book during a storm feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know that white noise particularly helps me get to sleep either. Like white noise tends to either uh, sort of bother me if I, if it's interrupt er, interfering with what I'm like trying to talk or something. Or I pretty quickly tune it out yeah. and don't notice it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it helps me particularly get to yeah. sleep or anything. Huh, that's interesting. I definitely am to the point where it's really hard for me to go to sleep without it at mm -hmm. this point. Partially just because I'm so used to it now because we always have the white noise on for Rory. Right. Like I didn't turn white noise on while you guys were on it, you know, gone a couple of weeks ago and I didn't didn't change how easily or difficult it was for me to get to sleep. So. I mean, are you sure? Because you didn't sleep well while I was gone. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was more. That was more like a schedule thing of like my not having uh, any particular thing that I need to do by a time yeah it ends up with me just like staying awake for way too long just doing random stuff I don't know. so you're saying that you are not good at setting boundaries for yourself yeah i guess so time time, time wise boundaries. at least yeah yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. another adhd yeah. thing to talk about i guess yeah i and that's and i find that interesting too because i think with ad with my with my ADHD, if I don't set time boundaries for myself, then I find like that's a that's a that's in my toolkit. I feel like if I have to be like, OK, at this time, I'm going to do this thing, because if I don't give it a time, mm -hmm. I won't I if I if I can just like do it at any point during the day, I won't get it done mm -hmm. unless it's a habit like the dishes or vacuuming. Is this interesting to talk about? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah, for me, it's more like I kind of go where the wind blows me. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I feel like working on an art project right now. Oh, I feel like, you know, 
You don't find that you get less done if you do that, though? Uh, I... Do you find that you don't get the things done that you don't want to do when you do that? Yeah, that's the that's the bigger problem is not doing things I don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I don't know if this Maybe is... Maybe we can help you come up with some uh, ways to trick yourself into getting things done that you don't want to do because I feel like that is the ADD thing, right? I'm not interested in this, so I don't want to do it. Yeah, I, I just do it when there's a deadline for it. Yeah. Or like when I said I would do it three times and I still haven't done it and someone's like, did you do that thing? Oh, I guess I'll just do it now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That kind of thing. But because I, I find that like if I don't enjoy something, I have to like, I've I've little like brain hacks where I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna let myself listen to this audiobook that I really want to listen to, unless I do it while I'm exercising. Yeah. And then I'm looking forward to exercising because I'm looking forward to listening to this book. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's helpful to people. This is probably common sense stuff that people already know, but yeah, I don't know. It's a uh... It's a very mundane sort of topic, I guess, like yeah. day-to-day stuff, yeah. which there are podcasts about that and stuff like that. Um, I, I know there are ADHD, like brain hack podcasts or how to work better for your with yeah. your, your brain when you have ADHD. I, I know there's YouTube channels about it and stuff. I, I get advertised or I get shown in the YouTube algorithm sometimes or whatever. I mean, I'm certainly motivated to talk about this if it helps you come up with ways that you'll want to clean more. <laughs> um that sounds like a very boring podcast for it's exciting for me for everyone but ginger <laughs> i mean i do a fair amount of cleaning you do you do and stuff but but uh, but you you do have trouble making your own lists of things to clean i think yeah um, i usually just do stuff when i notice it needs to be done if, yeah if i'm gonna do it that's usually when i do it yeah like oh i see there's dishes but which by yeah, the way, but, I, but the, I, the ADD keeps you from noticing it as much. That's that's true. Is the problem? Um, but by the way, I I can do the dishes when we're done with this. If you want, it's not a big deal. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do them. It's I fine. mean, I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we should. What were we even talking about at this point? Bad ASMR. Do you well, have? We're do still you... talking about bad ASMR. Uh, we we segued into the ADD thing, but Back into um, that. yeah, I guess so. But yeah, do you have any other ideas? That's my last idea this week. Um, yeah, I have more ideas. Um, I think uh, I have another idea that's maybe sort of along similar lines. So I think I'm actually going to steer to a different idea. Okay. Which is I had ChatGPT suggest 100 titles for novels. Oh, no. And so I was thinking no. <laughs> we, could, we, could, we could randomly... I'm not going to read 100 titles. Okay, for good. No, I'm going to say it's 100 so that we could roll a D100 and then pick one. And see if we can talk about what it would be about or something like that. Okay. All right. I didn't bring my dice in here. And I think they're in. You can virtual dice it. So, yeah, I think I'll. Can I just type into Google roll a D100? And will it just roll one? It might. It didn't, but it will take me to rolladie.net. Get on that, Google. I could just I could just be roll. your D100 and pick a random number. You got 28. 28. I was going to pick 27. Ha. Huh. Yeah, but 27 is the number everybody picks. What? Why? Because it's the most like random seeming number. That's like a actually a thing. Huh. Because it's like it's not even, it's not too high, it's not too low, right? Because like a random number could be 1. Right. right? But nobody's ever if you ask a person give me a random number between why, 100 and 1. Why 27 and not like 37? Uh 37 could be picked as well. I I feel I just feel like 27 is like one that gets picked a lot. Hmm. But anyway, 28 is Lost in the Echoing Labyrinth is the title. Lost in the Echoing Labyrinth. Okay. It's kind of, it's not much of a title, that one. No. It doesn't, maybe not the best one, but but the Echoing Labyrinth. Okay, so. Lost that, in the Echoing Labyrinth. It sounds like, a, I mean, obviously a labyrinth is like a big maze or whatever. I mean, it's going to be a fantasy book probably, right? I guess. Well, maybe. It could be sci-fi maybe. Yeah. It's a, an Echoing Labyrinth sounds like one that there isn't much in, right? There yeah. aren't a lot of monsters or. or... Yeah, it's, it's a title that sounds good until you think about it too long a little bit and you're like oh actually does this what does this mean right. lost in the echoing labyrinth i feel like you just picked these words because they sounded good together yeah it's which is i guess makes sense this chat gpt came up with it yeah it's i feel like there are i feel like it sounds like a, a title but doesn't quite 
for a novel, but it doesn't quite actually work as one. Yeah. There isn't quite enough there. Should we there. re-roll? Sure. Uh, I rolled 18. Let's see. Chronicles of the Ephemeral Enigma. Again. That one, Chronicles at least, starts us somewhere, I feel like. The Ephemeral Enigma must be a thing that goes on over time. Ephemeral I Enigma. I think I like this one even less. Okay, I'll roll again. <laughs> Chat GPT, what are you doing? Okay, it's a 22. Sirens of the Celestial Abyss. Sirens of the Celestial Abyss. That at least Abyss. has somebody in the title, Sirens. Okay, okay, yeah. So maybe it's like a sci-fi retelling of... Of the Odyssey or of something? Of the Odyssey or something like that. Hmm, okay. It could be fun. Sirens of the Celestial Abyss. So what do sirens do? They Usually they lure people in yeah. to their death or whatever, yeah. sailors and whatnot. Luring ships into the black hole. Right. It's a celestial abyss. Uh-huh. Well, it's a celestial abyss, a black hole. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. So celestial abyss is a black hole, but it sounds kind of almost religious or something, right? Yeah. So it's it sounds like it's um, some some society's name for a black hole. Maybe there's like a planet that orbits a black hole or something like that, and they mm-hmm. call it the celestial abyss. Okay. I guess if the sirens are in the black hole... They would want to lure people into the black hole. Maybe the sirens aren't actually real creatures, but it's just like... Gravity? A, it's <laughs> just a pole, that, a, a like mental pole that the celestial abyss slash black hole has that lures people into it. Hmm. What would make... I mean, a black hole has a, a physical pole. I mean, pole, it has a physical pole, yes. But what would, what would be a... Like... Which usually means everybody knows don't try to go into You're it. You're drawn to just the like nothingness of it. Or is there something in there? Or maybe there's fabled to be something in there. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's full of gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Maybe it makes you think it's full of gold. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, so this is the idea, I guess. If we were going to do this one, I think we would probably roll a few more times to yeah. try to find one that's more interesting. Or maybe it's just rolling a few times and talking about different ones or yeah. whatever. Okay, um, that could be kind of fun. Yeah, that's that's that one. Should we talk about what we've talked about so far? Yeah, let's narrow it down. Should we narrow it down a bit? About? Yeah, okay. All right, so we've got Miss Rachel Talkback Podcast or right. Bluey Talkback Podcast. Or Bluey. Bad ASMR. Bad sounds or Bad sounds, sounds in general. We had... Uh, titles the the novel titles the novel titles and the don't talk to me until i've had my uh amphetamines ADHD, adhd podcast, podcast. is that it i think that might be it okay anything piquing your interest this week i don't know i'm not super excited about any of these i guess yeah. but maybe i'm just tired <laughs> i am that we are we are very tired we are very sleep deprived yeah rory's working on getting his molars right now and he is waking up every hour or two. So I know I'm usually so high energy on this. Yeah, podcast. <laughs> me too. Um, My coffee is wearing off right now. I feel like. Oh, okay. um, so. Uh, I mean, I have more ideas we could talk about potentially as well. I mean, let's go with the title one. I mean, if this, if okay. we don't have anything we're super excited about, let's let's, let's get some random stuff. Let's in give there. it to let's. Let's go random and maybe we'll get something we're excited about. Okay. All right. I'll roll again. 36. 36 is Threads of Destiny, colon, a tapestry of time. That's the most generic. That's like the novel where things happen. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like Threads of Destiny. Okay. So. I mean, it's. Everybody it's, has or those. Or it involves t- time travel, maybe. Maybe. If Destiny exists, everybody's got a thread of it. Right. And a tapestry of time is literally just a weird way to say a story. A story. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we should roll again. Roll again. Let's see what else we got. All right. 19. Inkwell and infinity. Inkwell and infinity. That's very. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a story about somebody writing stories. Yeah. And the things that they write about in the stories start to happen. Yeah, maybe it's like a magic inkwell. Yeah. That can make anything happen. Yeah. And maybe it gets like spilled. Oh. And the ink runs everywhere and it does something. I don't know. Crazy things start something, happening. Something crazy. Inkwell and infinity. It's, yeah. I mean, 
there is the whole there's a hundred floors of fright. They're not all going to be winners <laughs> yeah. thing. But so, so far, far we haven't had a lot really of been winners. Big winners have yeah, they? not so far. But again, there are a lot more. Yeah, I feel like that's the thing we could say about um, this podcast too. If this week doesn't go well, hey guys, there's a hundred floors of frights. <laughs> They're not all going to be winners. Uh, I rolled again and got 28 again. So I rolled again again and I got 59. All right. Chronicles of the Celestial Minstrel. So, so far what all of these have in common is they all sound like books I have no interest in reading. <laughs> right. So that's a problem, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> also, does anybody ever use the word minstrel outside of like a very specific kind of Fant- medieval fantasy kind of aesthetic. Right. And does anybody want to read a whole book about a minstrel? Well, I mean, like, people yeah, play like I feel like, like that's a bards. side character, right? Yeah. I mean, a minstrel's like a bard, I guess. And there's stories about bards, but they're usually the one telling the story. Yeah. Do you want to, like, read a story about the adventures of a minstrel is what I'm saying. The other thing with Even minst- a celestial one. The other thing with minstrels is, like, minstrel shows have... You know, we're like a big racist thing yeah. in the past, and that's not a great yeah. association. Yeah, not a great title, Chat GPT. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, should I roll again? I guess. Yeah, roll Maybe again. Maybe one of these will turn out. It, there's a hundred. At least one should be kind of good, right? There's a hundred floors of fright. There's going to be at least one good one. Okay, thirty-nine. The Illusionist's Apprentice. Now that sounds like a real title. Like could be a real title for a real book. Like somebody would read a book about an illusionist apprentice, maybe. Yeah, I mean that could be about anything, really, because like that could just be the setting. Like he just happens to be an apprentice to an illusionist, but the stuff that happens behind the scenes there sounds like what it's gonna be. What's gonna be interesting, right? Not like it doesn't actually have to be about the magic show. Well, an illusionist could be like just a magician from a re- the real world, right? Or right. it could be like a magic fantasy illusionist that can make real like illusions really mm. make hallucinations happen kind of thing or something. Maybe Although, the illusionist is evil and the apprentice is apprenticing to be evil too. And then something happens. He has like a hero's journey. Yeah, maybe. And, and the illusionist and turns could, against the illusionist. An illusionist could gaslight people pretty fucking good, right? Like, mm, yeah, that's what gaslighting basically is, right? Illusions right. to make you go crazy or whatever. So you mm-hmm. think it could be a fantasy book about abuse or something? Maybe. Is that what you're going for? Um, doesn't sound I, very fun. Though, it doesn't sound that, fun. That it sounds that. interesting. Could I mean, be it interesting. sounds like it could be interesting. Or it could be a more lighthearted thing, right? An illusionist could be somebody that goes to kids' birthday parties and... It makes fun illusions happen, right? And you could be the, you could be the apprentice for that, right? Now I'm thinking about like another bad sound is like balloon squeaking. Yes, balloon squeaking is a bad sound. I guess the illusionist could uh, could make any bad sound happen. So mm-hmm. that could be a powerful thing, right? Because you think of an illusionist, even if you're talking about like real magical illusions or whatever, like that's not as powerful as like a fireball or a you know right. like that kind of powerful magic but you could still do some pretty yeah but i mean like pretty nut powerful stuff if you could make somebody think that their fireball is headed towards them so they stop shooting fireballs at you that's powerful right like messing with people's minds is powerful right right it depends right because like if you just shoot if you make it seem like a fireball is happening at some point they're going to realize no fireball actually happened right because it's just an illusion but you could make like you got to do stuff that they're like super. Fr- I guess I'm thinking of like Scarecrow from Batman, like making you imagine your greatest nightmares and fears mm. and stuff. Maybe right. would be a yeah. Bat thing. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about my greatest fears, like being trapped in a room full of spiders. Okay. Yeah. Certainly, if somebody made it seem like spiders were crawling all over me, I wouldn't be attacking anybody with right, a fireball. Right. Right. Yeah. That just made me think of an issue of Spider Man, a Spider Man comic where spider-man comes in and like doesn't want to fight somebody so he's just trying to intimidate them basically and i guess they don't know who spider-man is because he's like i'm spider-man i have the power to shoot spiders all over your face or something like <laughs> like like he pretended like his spider powers were like making a ton of spiders appear and like the people just, like the bad guy just ran away or something <laughs> i mean that would make me run away for sure yeah 
What are your greatest fears? Um, what are my greatest fears? I mean, no, I asked you. No, I know. I'm asking <laughs> me as well. I mean, I don't like spiders. If somebody, if there were spiders all over me, I'd be pretty freaked out. Okay. I don't have like a, arachnophobia, I guess, or whatever per se, but because I feel like there's nobody who wants spiders crawling all over them, right? I mean, somebody might. Well, there are people okay. who are really into spiders. Yeah, true. But the vast majority, nobody who doesn't have a weird thing about spiders wants, I'm saying you don't have to have a particular fear of spiders for the idea of spiders crawling all over you to freak you out, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, that. I guess that's true because I feel like I, I do okay with spiders in general. Like we saw one in the bathroom last night. And I let it crawl away, do its thing. I yeah. don't like killing them. Yeah. I don't think that you should kill them just because they freak you out. Because they're freaky. And they're beneficial. They do a lot of good things. We also freaking put spider webs all over our stuff. Though. Yeah, it's but the, those annoying. catch bugs. Other bugs, the, like flies that we don't want flying around. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. I just don't like cleaning up spider webs. It's annoying. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we get a lot more cobwebs than spider webs. Well, cobwe- right? What do you think cobwebs are? I mean, I guess are? that's... Cobwebs are just unused spider webs. Right? I mean, I guess, yeah. That doesn't really bother me that much, though. Yeah. I guess maybe it doesn't bother me because you're the one that usually do, cleans it up. I do most of the cleaning of them, yeah. <laughs> it bothers me if I run into one. If they're up high on the ceiling, I mean, yeah, it's annoying because they've got to be cleaned by you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... I've had like experiences or like I've known, like I remember one time a spider just like rappelled down from the ceiling, like right down to my dad's head. Oh, was it a big one? uh, Not terribly big, but big enough, right? Like, and it's like, I'm not going to panic and completely freak out, but you know, there are dangerous spiders in the world that could actually hurt you and nobody wants a spider on their head. It's unexpected spider. Yeah. That is the, it's the jump, spiders are the jump scare yeah it, like they're the the jump scare creature sure yeah but i definitely don't have the spider problem you, that you have do you have any scary spider stories do you have any bad spider experiences um not really see maybe that's why i was also like the one who my mom would have my mom didn't like spiders or doesn't like spiders i guess probably uh and would have me kill them so i was like the designated spider killer in the house or whatever so I sort of had, I, even if I don't like, didn't like them or was scared of them or whatever, I just had to do it anyway. See, I, I was that too. I, I tried to take them outside. Yeah. One of the, one of the great like fear conquering moments of my life was when there was, cause we'd get those big black wolf spiders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I didn't live in Washington growing up where yeah. they have a lot of big, big wolf spiders and stuff. And they're harmless, but they're or, terrifying. Or brown recluses, which are, okay. aren't harmless. Yeah, we didn't get brown recluses. And the wolf spiders are pretty harmless, but they're so scary looking. Anyway, there was one in the bathroom one day, and I wanted to get a cup and put it outside. The only cup that was cl- clean that I could find was was a see-through cup. Mm-hmm. And I did. I got a piece of paper, slid it under there. And, like, that was scary because, like, it's right next to my hand. I can see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, was, those, that one was... Oh, maybe the size of a ping pong ball. Pretty big. You mean including the legs? Including the legs. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty big spider. Yeah. Because the wolf spiders get fairly big. And they they would cut, we would just find them like chilling in our sink a lot of times. I recently watched a YouTube video. I've started getting these um, recommendations through this channel that talks about just like, like there was one I watched about bats and one about spiders and one about lizards or something like, I don't know. The guy just talks about weird animals and stuff, but I was interested to find out some facts about spiders, but I was like, Ginger could not watch this video, right? You would have not enjoyed. It wasn't even particularly gross. It was just like showing a lot of different spiders, right? I mean, I feel like if I'm prepared for it, I do okay. It's like, it's when all of a sudden I'm not, when I'm not expecting a spider and suddenly there's a spider, but I do try to look at them a lot because I don't want to be afraid of them. I'm trying to like slowly condition myself to not be afraid of them, but it's hard. I've had a lot of unexpected spider experiences Mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, what about cockroaches? I don't care for them, but I'm not afraid of them. And I also haven't had like an infestation like you had. Uh, yeah. I know that you've had at least one because I was there for it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I lived in a building where there was a cockroach infestation that forced me to move because they wouldn't take care of it. I ended up reporting them to the city. Yeah. Uh, and that was very unpleasant. And for probably about a year afterwards, I was still 
paranoid that I might maybe accidentally brought a cockroach with me Mm -hmm. to my new home. Yeah, you like kept your coffee maker in the uh, in the freezer for like several (laughs) months and then threw it out. Yeah, because I realized, well, don't ever Google like what to do about a cockroach infestation because you'll find too much information and it will make you afraid of everything. Right. And I write a couple stories about people that like found cockroaches in appliances like months later. And so I had this really nice coffee maker that I ended up throwing out because I realized I was never going to be able to to mentally get over it and drink coffee from it. I was always going to think, what if bugs nested in this at some point? Right. And that's it. <laughs> new. I mean, I think at that point, you just got to buy a new coffee maker. So I guess as far as illusions go, <laughs> this is the illusionist apprentice we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So as far so as illusions bugs, go, bugs, bugs is a good one. Could be a good, I guess stuff that is an effective illusion would be stuff where you don't want to interact with it, right? You see it, and that's enough to go, I'm out of here. So, wait, but did we determine you're not afraid of anything? Oh, I'm sure I'm afraid of stuff. I just can't think of but anything. heights. Again, like, I have a regular fear of heights, right? Like, I'm afraid of falling from a high height if I'm on a high height, but I'm not But, like, not overly. scared enough to not go skydiving or anything. No, I would go skydiving. I haven't gone skydiving, Snakes. but I would. Yeah, don't like them particularly, but... Sharks? Yeah. I mean, all these things I have the regular amount of fear of, I think. I don't, I can't think of anything, any animal or specific thing. Okay, wait, wait, I got it. Okay, so what if the illusionist... I mean, if I saw a shark flying at me, I would run away. What if the illusionist tells you that there is a serious problem with your electric bill and you've got to make like three phone calls? (laughs) That would be more scary, I guess. That would be more... um, that would be more upsetting. Yeah. In a in a deep inside kind of way. So yeah, I guess like weird social situations yeah. or like or not even weird. You gotta but- go to a, a big costume party and uh it's a serious costume party. So you gotta come up with a really good costume and you don't know anybody there. Yeah, I would just find a reason to not go. And the only no, you can't. That's not an option. You'll be fired. <laughs> okay, well I could get a new job. <laughs> Uh, Wait, I'm the illusionist and I'm arguing with you right now. (laughs) (laughs) You'll lose your house if you don't go to this party. Okay, well, that's the other thing, though, is a lot of... uh, all, most of the stuff that I have those kind of like anxiety, because what we're talking about right, is anxiety, not really like fear. But anxiety fear, is but, a fear of the unknown. No, right? I know. I'm just saying like it's a, a being anxious about a basic thing is not doesn't really rise to the level of like I, fear of some kinds of things. Anyway, the my point is that just like I have lots of these kinds of things and sometimes I have to do them and I just end up doing them. And I do I don't like the like idea, it. though, of an illusionist who like messes with you about mundane things right it's just like i'm gonna give you a big important task to do and you're gonna be too busy thinking about it to like <laughs> stop me in my evil plans yeah i'm gonna give you an important task but the like success criteria are sort of nebulous yeah <laughs> and if you don't do it by a certain time something bad will happen yeah i don't know yeah I mean, um, that's and you my have job. to make multiple phone calls and go yeah. to multiple social situations that are pretty that are pretty uncomfortable for you. Think- oh, and you got to fly there. <laughs> I'm not afraid of flying. I just don't like flying particularly. <laughs> so this would just be. A but it bunch makes of you anxious. Travel like. makes you anxious. Yeah, I guess. I guess. You. Ha- it makes me anxious in the sense of like. You got to take like four connecting flights. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it makes me anxious in the sense of like on the day or up coming up to the day i'm anxious about it until it happens and then it's fine yeah right like just anxious in the sense of my brain is constantly trying to remind me hey don't forget to do the thing you gotta do the thing i know it's tomorrow but yeah but don't forget to do it tomorrow or whatever yeah so this would just be a like making me annoyed and anxious putting me putting how to put miles in a pretty bad mood you gotta take four connecting flights and when you get there uber doesn't exist so you gotta take like three buses to get where you're going Uh uh-huh yeah i mean the thing is i've done all that before i've done all that kind of stuff before i've had to do it for stuff and it sucks and i don't like it but it's not like yeah it's not like that bad right yeah it's never that bad when you once you actually do it right yeah so the anticipation yeah 
Yeah, it's more the like being afraid I'll forget or not get something right or not do something that I need to do. But once I've done it, then it's over and it's fine. Yeah. Um, Is it that way with phone calls? Yeah, more or less. I guess maybe it's that way with phone calls for me too. But I really just hate them. I also am not sure how the illusionist would make me think I have to do all this stuff with an illusion. (laughs) Would they have like my boss illusions. show up or something? It's multiple illusions. This is like, he's like, he's a master illusionist. So he weaves. <laughs> he weaves. He okay. weaves. <laughs> but like, why do I believe this illusion? Right? Like what scenario would I be in where I would have to do this stuff? I mean, that's, I'm not the master illusionist. Oh, why okay. are you asking me? Okay. No, he, uh, he, um. This would be do you a want pretty, me to come up with a scenario where you would, would be, have to do all these things? And so this is all being, this novel, this is all happening from the perspective of the apprentice <laughs> of the master illusionist, who's like taking notes on how to annoy a guy by giving him a bunch of crappy <laughs> tasks. <laughs> it's not a very good novel, I don't think. Well, it wasn't a very good title. Yeah, so. maybe, we should re- maybe we should roll again. All right. Okay, number 27 is A Journey Through Timeless Pages. That's nothing. Journey through timeless pages. Okay. Number 100, The Enchanted Equation. <laughs> it's a magical math book. <laughs> the Enchanted Equation. What is the Enchanted Equation? Uh, maybe it's like the quadratic equation, but um, with little stars on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the quadratic equation, but when you do it, it makes a twinkly noise. Yeah, yeah it's enchanted when you, like that. When you get the answer correct, it goes... <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, number 91 is Astral Alchemy. Nah. No. Nah. Number 62, Cogs and Conundrums. All of these sound like, like books that would be on the bookshelf in a video game or something. Right. Like fake like books. Fake books. Yeah. Number 68, The Enchanted Codex. That's just a, a magic book. Yeah. That's literally just a magic book, which I guess could be something, but it's not. Okay, number 10, Reverie of the Celestial Alchemist. I they really like celestial stuff. Yeah, they really alchemy. like celestial because it makes it sound cool. Um, yeah, these are all pretty bad. How about number five, The Quantum Quilt? <laughs> <laughs> so is a quilt that causes you to travel through time. It's like Quantum Leap, but with a quilt. Okay, it's a time travel quilt. It's a time travel so quilt. So you, what? If you sleep under the quilt, you time travel. If yeah. you just wrap yourself in the yeah, quilt. Yeah, and it's like quantum leap, though, where you like you don't know where you're going to end up. Do you end up in someone else's body? Mm. Or someone else's quilt? <laughs> <laughs> you time travel to a different... You time travel, but you're just a quilt. <laughs> Wherever you show up, you're just a quilt. <laughs> I meant like sleeping under no, someone I, else's quilt. No, but I was thinking like you're in you're, the quilt. You're inhabiting the quilt. You're inhabiting the quilt. Okay, okay. <laughs> That seems like a pretty bad situation. Bad situation. Okay, so so you okay, so you put on the you you you, you sleep under the quilt. No, this is a terrible idea. You sleep under the quilt and you wake up the next day in As inhabiting a quilt. a quilt, but like an Amish quilt from the eighteen hundreds or something. Yeah. And you are forced to just watch events unfold. Well, or you get folded. Or you get folded. <laughs> You get folded up. You and get what put are you in supposed a, to accomplish as a quilt? You're just trying to get back to your original quilt so you can be in your body again, I and guess. Maybe today will be the day that you get back to your quilt. <laughs> <laughs> will today be the day that, that she leaps back <laughs> to her own quilt? <laughs> but then you do, and you're still just the quilt. <laughs> So it's like a quilt no, soul transfer. No, quilty face. <laughs> Yay, I'm a quilt again. No, wait, no. <laughs> okay, well, that's the best one so far, I would say. I'm just going to... I think we really made lemons, lemonade out of lemons there. We made lemons out of lemonade there. <laughs> that too. Um, we made lemons out of molehills, I think, in that one. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's not a lot of these that are good. I'm I'm not even rolling anymore. 
chasing the celestial butterfly, the serpent's shadow. Chasing the celestial butterfly. Yeah, you're right. ChatGPT really likes celestial. What was the prompt you put in? For Whispers this? in the quantum garden. <laughs> it's a quantum garden. Okay, so ChatGPT really likes quantum and celestial. I probably said for making its title sound deeper. I, I don't actually remember now because it was a little while ago. I think I just said novel titles, but maybe I said fantasy novel or something. I'm not sure. Cogs and conundrums, or did I read that one already? Cogs and conundrums was yeah. the one where I was the one that made me think these are just all fake book titles. Yeah, right, game. right, right. Whispers of the Nebula, of Moonlight and Mystery. No. That's again, a lot of these are what you would get if you just wanted to make up fake titles for books, which yeah. I guess is the is what ChatGPT took as its prompt or something. Right. Or it's just whispers from the quasar. There's a lot of whispers. Whispers from the quasar. I'm not even 100% what? on what a what quasar, is quasar is. It's a space thing, right? It's like a space thing. Let's see. What is a quasar? It's an extremely luminous, active galactic nucleus. Does that clear it up for you? Okay. It's a space thing, like <laughs> I said. It's a space thing. It's a, um, yeah, it's, I, I don't, I don't, what is a quasar in simple terms? <laughs> People also ask, what is a quasar in simple terms? Quasar is short for quasi stellar radio source. Okay, so it's because like laser quasars were discovered in 1963 as objects that looked like stars but emitted radio waves. Now the term is catch-all for all feeding and therefore luminous supermassive black holes, also often called active galactic nuclei. So is it a glowing black hole? Um, or is it just a star where someone's having a party? It's and listening to the radio. Ba- it's basically a black hole. They um, thought it, they thought it was a star, but then they said th- thought found that there were radio waves. It says Could it's it a just black be... hole. So today, most astronomers believe that quasars, radio galaxies, and the centers of so-called active galaxies are just different views of more or less the same phenomenon: a black hole with energetic jets beaming out from two sides. When the beam is directed towards us, we see the bright lighthouse of a quasar. So it's basically a black hole thing. Or is it a star where someone's listening? to the radio and having a party and that's why there's I mean, radio it's waves probably coming that in. yeah they, like, scientists have you thought about that scientist have you considered <laughs> what was that whispers from the quasar or something? whispers from so whispers from the quasar would be whispers from the black hole right it would well i mean quasars have or, radio waves coming or out or whispers from the galactic dance party right right um the garden of unwritten tales now that's sort of interesting, maybe. Except why would the tales be in a garden? And how are you how are you reading the tales if they're unwritten? Well, it doesn't say you're reading them. So you could just somebody, be So it's a garden where people tell stories? Maybe maybe it's like you go in the garden and you, you put your you put stories? your you put your ear up to a flower and you hear a story. <laughs> 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 I would hang out in that garden. Yeah. Or experiencing I mean, or stories, I would, or would that make garden sense. would make me feel crazy. Right. Well, yeah, that too for sure. I just, I just put my ear up to this daisy and it started reciting Moby Dick. <laughs> you put you put your ear up. It's like it's like tale. call me call me Stephen. <laughs> it's it's Moby Dick, but a different one. But a different one. Yeah. Yeah, know. it's alternate universe tales. There's a there's unwritten a, in this universe. There's a Far Side comic that's just like. Herman Melville with like a bunch of pieces of paper, like where he scribbled call out, like, Steven. call me, call me things other than yeah, Ishmael. Yeah, I think yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. The Enigmatic Engineer's Diary. No. Chasing the Dragonfly's Euphoria. No. The Enchanted Elixir. Chasing that's, the we... Dragonfly's Euphoria. Yeah, that's like the Dragonfly's problem. I don't know why I would be chasing <laughs> his Euphoria. It sounds like, well, is it Chasing the Dragon a drug thing? Yeah, I guess. So chasing the dragonfly's euphoria sounds like it's probably also a drug thing. It's definitely a book that if it existed, I would be like, that's not a book for me. <laughs> <laughs> the Astral Amulet, Midnight Reveries. That's... I, first, I thought you were going to say the Astral Ambulance, <laughs> which is more the interesting. Astral Ambulance. Which is hmm. more interesting. Ambulance in Space. Yeah. That's not that interesting, though. I mean, it sounds like it could be like a Douglas Adams book or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Although I guess like it's just the astral anything is just, it's just the thing in space. Yeah. Which is kind of boring. Whispers of the Starborn. Yeah. That's almost something. Almost something. The Alchemist's Alibi. <laughs> That's. ChatGPT really likes alliteration. And alchemists also. Yeah. 
the Forgotten Chalice. Echo, Eternal Echoes of Elysium, speaking of alliteration. Yeah. Eternal Echo, The Serpent's Shadow, more alliteration. Uh, Whispers in the Quantum Garden. Did we say that already? No, we, Whisper, did, did we, we? said whispers in the, or we said the Garden of Unwritten Tales or something. Yeah. And many other whispers. It's, like, and, I, it's interesting because like, uh, I feel like a lot of these are supposed to sound mysterious. Yeah, well, a, a handful of them at least just have the word mystery or mysterious in them too yeah whispers of the crystal cove the enigmatic eon lost in the echoing halls chronicles of the forgotten starship now that one could almost be something that could almost be something yeah all right well so i think the only one of these that really has legs is the quantum quilt <laughs> <laughs> And that's really only because we turned it into lemons. Yeah, we turned it into some kind of lemons. <sighs> and lemons are okay. Lemons are okay. <laughs> kind of fun sometimes. Um, so we've learned, what have we learned this week? We've learned that we should not ask ChatGPT Chat for GPT creative would, ideas. would not come up with good novels unless, I, I maybe with a better prompt. I think I just said, give me a hundred titles for novels. Don't ever fire writers. ChatGPT yeah. will not replace not not AI anytime not soon, at least. Writers. Yeah. All right. Well, we should probably get wrapping up. Yes. So you can find us on social media. Please find us on social media. Like us. Follow us. Subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review, please. You can find all of our links to our social media on coolpodcast.website. You can email us at what at coolpodcast.website or send us an Instagram message. Send us a Facebook message. Send us a threads message. I guess you could send us a Twitter message. I am only usually on there once a week to post about our podcast. I feel like we're probably going to just stop with Twitter yeah. or X or whatever. It's just getting worse and worse. And yeah. There's no real point. To I it. mean, I, I'm still tweeting for the like 10 people that follow us on there. But yeah. anyway, please send us your ideas. We will talk about them. We will give you a shout out. We could come up with stupid ideas forever, but we want to hear your stupid ideas. Yes. Send all your stupid and ideas. And talk about your stupid ideas. The stupider, the better. Welcome to What Should Our Outro Be About? The podcast within a podcast where we try to figure out what this outro that you're about to listen to will be about. Do you have any ideas for outros this week? You go. You go. I'll well, come up with something. I have one which is just a stupid Al Yankovic type idea that's a stupid version of a song that I don't even like that's been stuck in my head for days. And so if we pick that, I will sing that quickly and that could be the outro. Oh, well, I mean, I'm not going to like go with one of my ideas when I could hear you st sing a stupid song. It's really stupid. A good. I so stupid. I want to hear it. Well, you have to have at least you one idea. You can't deprive our audience. Do you have a one, at least one idea? Quick? Um, yeah. Uh, so every week for our outro, we just play a really bad noise. Okay, sure. Or a really good noise. Maybe that would be better. Yeah, because I already did fart sounds for an outro. Or maybe it'll be a good noise or a bad noise, and you got to listen to find out. Yeah, or maybe we play... A good noise and a bad noise at the exact same time at the same volume, and you get to experience both at the same time, and that could be something. One in each ear. One, yeah, yeah. One all on the one's left on the side, left one channel, on the one's right, right channel. Right channel, yeah. <laughs> so if, if people were listening to this podcast the way you and I often do, where we just split a pair of headphones <laughs> at bedtime, <laughs> we would hear kidding. totally different <laughs> outros. <laughs> Actually kind of like that, but yeah. do you want to hear my dumb, yeah, dumb I want, thing? No, I want to hear your dumb song. Okay. Are you familiar with a group called Maroon 5? I I know of them. I have not listened to them. I, I know haven't, of them. I haven't really either, but for some reason, one of their stupid songs got stuck in my head. I have a feeling I probably know more of their songs than I think I do. Yeah. Do you know their song, Moves Like Jagger? I don't think so. Really? You don't know that? I don't think I know it. I'll just sing the stupid version of it. All right. I got them boobs like Jagger. I got them boobs like Jagger. I got them boobs like Jagger. Okay, I do know that song. Yeah, okay, I thought so. All right. Well, that's <laughs> it for us this week. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. What was that podcast about? I'm trying to figure it out. Didn't catch what that was about.